Hi guys, thanks for being here. Today I'll be talking about how trichoscopy can help in choosing the right treatment for your patient with alopecia areata. Let's go. This patient comes to your office and asks, Doctor, will my hair regrow? What can you say as a doctor? We do not really have tools in medicine to predict whether or not the hair will regrow in a patient with alopecia areata. So today I would like to present a new trichoscopy based alopecia areata predictive score which was developed in our department and coordinated by two young colleagues who are experts in trichoscopy. This system requires a quite deep knowledge about the trichoscopy of alopecia areata. I made a separate recording on this. However, I will summarize very shortly the most typical finding in alopecia areata are the exclamation mark hairs. When they break off, what will be left will be the black dots. If an exclamation mark hair grows very long, then this will be a tapered hair. So a, this a tapered hair is basically a very long exclamation mark hair. If a patient has a disease course with variable activity and the hair will grow thicker and thinner and thicker and thinner and so on, then the constrictions which will develop when these, within these hairs, they are called the so-called Paul Pincus constrictions. When the hair is regrowing, it usually regrows in the form of so-called upright regrowing hair. However, in some cases, the patients may develop the so-called pigtail hairs or silker hairs. When a hair follicle is empty for a longer period of time, it will be filled with sebum and keratotic material. So this will appear in trichoscopy as a yellow dot. And sometimes we may also observe the vellus hairs in a patient with alopecia areata. Our study has shown that the trichoscopy findings at the moment when the patient is starting therapy, they have no predictive value for hair regrowth. What is important are the trichoscopy findings after approximately two months after starting therapy. And these findings may be helpful in predicting what will happen down the road and whether the patient will have hair regrowth and whether he or she will have hair six months after starting therapy. This method is based on trichoscopy of the hair bearing margin of the most recent patch and it has to perform, be performed two months after starting therapy or later. In this trichoscopy examination, there are some features which have a positive predictive value and some of them have a negative predictive value. On the left part of the slide, you see the negative features, features which have a negative predictive value. These are the exclamation mark hairs, the tapered hairs, the black dots, and the broken hairs, whereas the upright regrowing hairs and the pigtails or the so-called circle hairs, they have a positive predictive value. Based on the trichoscopy results and the presence or absence of these factors, we can predict the probability of hair regrowth in a patient. And this table shows why this is important, because if in trichoscopy we have, for example, two positive features, this means the probability of hair regrowth is almost 100%. This means that this is probably not a good moment to think about changing therapy. However, if we have minus two points or minus three points, then the probability of hair regrowth is less than 1%. What does it mean? It means we should consider either changing the therapy or changing the dose. I would like to use two examples to show you how it works. In this patient, do you believe that the probability of hair regrowth is rather high or rather low? If you like, you can post your guess on the card, which is on the slide. Well, let's look at the predictive markers, the negative predictive markers, the exclamation mark hairs, the tapered hairs, the black dots, and the broken hairs. So I'm looking for these features and what I see are the black dots, quite many of them, and some broken hairs. So this is a minus two here. And let's look at the positive predictive markers. 
and I do see some upright regrowing hairs. So this gives a score of minus one and the probability of hair regrowth is 2% according to the study by my colleagues. So this is quite low. This is another example. Also an image taken two months after begin of therapy. And also here you can post your guess whether you believe whether the probability of hair regrowth is rather high or rather low in this patient. And I'll go together with you through the markers. On the negative side, side I do not see any exclamation mark hairs. I do not see tapered hairs, black dots or broken hairs. But looking at the positive side, I do see some upright regrowing hairs and some pigtail hairs. So this gives us a score of two. This means that the probability of hair regrowth in this patient is 98%. So those of us who voted for high are correct. So in this patient, probably a change of therapy is not needed, at least at this moment. This is a summary of the positive and negative predictive markers in trichoscopy of alopecia areata. However, I would like to draw your attention to one thing. This is that I believe that the system works best in patchy alopecia areata. It is not really useful for alopecia totalis or alopecia universalis. I have put into this table some markers which may be of some usefulness in these patients. However, the score does not apply to patients with alopecia universalis or alopecia totalis. If you would like to Google for some more details, here are the articles for both patchy alopecia and alopecia totalis and universalis. So I am doing this presentation to show that trichoscopy at the beginning, before starting therapy, has no or almost no predictive value for hair regrowth after treatment. There are some exceptions. There are factors which may influence the course of treatment, but as a general rule, whether the patient has some hair in trichoscopy at the beginning or only yellow dots, this does not influence the course of treatment and the outcome of treatment. There is a discussion going on whether or not vellus hairs, the thin and fine hypopigmented hairs, whether they predict hair regrowth and specifically whether they can transform into terminal hairs. And our study shows that the regrowth of vellus hairs has no predictive value. So some patients with the regrowth of vellus hairs will lose their vellus hairs and they have no regrowth, while others will go on to full hair regrowth. This image shows two patients with vellus hairs and it also points to the fact that vellus hairs are best visible in patients with darker skin phototypes, whereas in patients with light skin phototypes and especially if we used a contact dermoscope, these vellus hairs may be almost invisible. So in summary, we perform trichoscopy at the beginning before therapy to make sure that we have the correct diagnosis and also sometimes it may be helpful for the management of patients with alopecia areata. But it is useful to perform another trichoscopy examination after two months because it has a predictive value for regrowth. Why is it useful? Well, it is useful because now the rule is that in a patient who has no hair regrowth, we wait for approximately six months until we change the therapy or change the dose. With this method, we can shorten the time to approximately two months and make the decision about changing therapy or changing the dose significantly earlier compared to the six month period. With this, I would like to thank you a lot for being here. Thanks for all the subscriptions. And if you're new here and you would like to hear more about hair or about trichoscopy, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.